Today we're gonna give a lens away that we've been talking about. I know it's been a little while. We are doing that. And we are going to be doing a photo duel and it's going to be a little bit different because during our photo duel, we'll be answering some questions from the Q&A. All right, so the first order of business is to give this lens away. About a month ago, I did a video talking about this lens. I shot with it in San Francisco, and I said that if anyone could guess what this lens was, uh, you would be entered into a giveaway for the lens. And we had, wait, I have to look. 447 people guessed what lens it was. Thank you for those votes and for filling out our survey. Only 50 of those got the correct answer. It was the Viltrox. 85 1.8. The Viltrox lens is one that Viltrox sent me and I did a review of it, um, but I didn't really want to keep it because they send it to us and I want to bit remain unbiased for lens, for lens. We'll take other gear, but when it comes to lenses, people sending it to us, I really want to be unbiased. So we decided we would give that away. And so, yeah, a lot of you figured that out, that that was why we, or we would give away a lens and that's why you guessed what it is, so you're smart, those of you who figured that out. Some of you are just really good at identifying focal length and it was a matter of uh, seeing what we did in our past videos. And so, good job, those who guessed it right though. There were a lot of guesses were all over the place. A lot of you got the focal length right, just not the lens. So, I know this was kind of an obscure lens for a lot of Fuji shooters, but Congratulations for those 50 who got it. And we did a random number generator, and the winner of those 50 was... Owen Stewart Jr. Congratulations. So we'll be in touch, Owen. In this photo duel, we'll be taking turns taking photos like always, but in between taking our photos, we'll be answering questions from you. And don't forget to vote at the end for your favorite photo or photos. And we'll announce the winner from last photo duel. We will be shooting with the X-T3. And this time we've chosen to shoot with a zoom lens. We like to use this lens. This is our favorite travel lens, the 18 to 55 variable aperture lens. So that's what we'll be using. Let's go. We get a lot of questions about color grading. Um, how we color grade most this is very simple for documentary almost all documentary photography is almost straight up classic chrome which just tweaks to the curve uh, sometimes we increase the contrast a little bit for portraits we use the portra um, preset in fuji and that's and then we tweak it a little bit from there but basically and then uh, sometimes astia and velvia for landscape but man we, we like to stick to those fuji profiles and that's how we grade just more and more we grade less and less. Taking photos of doorknobs again. It's just my favorite. She likes doorknobs. <laughs> we'll have 15 shots of doorknobs. You may not see all of them. This is from Ian Dickerman and he asks, what's your opinion on flash photography? and what's the best way to learn. Maybe you could take what the opinion, what our opinion is on flash, and I'll take what is the best way to learn. So lately we've been shooting with less flash. We've really been relying on natural light more. When we go to shoots by ourselves, we don't typically take a flash with us. If we're doing a shoot together and it's kind of a big shoot, then we'll take a flash. Um, it's kind of a, um, we need the four hands or two people to be running that, um, to bring the flash along to make it less of a hassle and just easy flow. But um, yeah, we've just been timing our shoots so the light is good and the locations we've been to have been good. One of our favorite locations right now has been Snow Canyon that we live by and 
we love how the light bounces off the walls and so we haven't had a huge need for the flash when we go there or other locations where the light is good but I think the only exception would be weddings where we you kind of have to have you have to know how to use flash in, in wedding situations or it's very difficult to not and as far as how to learn flash photography I mean the best way to learn is just by practicing uh, we're lucky that we have kids who don't mind being photographed so when I was learning I experimented on them quite a bit with the flash to see how it affected their face, bounce flash in the house, strobes in our basement um, studio, stuff like that. Okay, the next question today is from our friend, Sweet Sweet Lou, mm -hmm. our buddy from New York. Hey. Um, he wants to know, first off, Cheez-Its or cheese snips I can't eat either because I have a gluten intolerance. <laughs> what do you prefer? And I don't really like it either. Sorry, it's Lou. It's been years since I've tried cheese snips though, so maybe I could try them. <laughs> Let you know. We're such food elitists. <laughs> And then the second question, the serious one, is how do you, uh, I actually don't have a question in front of me, it's something like, how do you balance um, work and family? Do we have a philosophy on balancing our, our family life with our work, and probably specifically photography? Well, first of all, family for us comes first. Um, first priority for sure is our family. And a good example is this video. We've been trying to do this video for a while. Um, but it worked out that grandparents could watch the kids today. So they're getting good grandparent time while we're getting good photography and each other time. So that's another way too, is a lot of times we do this together. And so it's kind of our date night, so. And I think also with that is uh, we give each other lots of breaks. And when I get breaks, I do photography. Um, when it's my turn. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and that this also actually answers a question we get a lot from viewers, which is why don't we see Danae more on the channel? Um, do you want to speak to that, Danae? Yeah, that's just concerning looking drinking water stuff. The, oh, this is the old jail. Interesting. Anyway. Um, Focus. <laughs> it's so hard. I just want to. Um, <laughs> yeah. So when I get breaks, 
I mean, when we get breaks together, we go and do photography, but when I get breaks by myself, it's like TJ Maxx and pedicure time, so. No one knows what TJ Maxx is. It's shopping. She shops. Shopping and pedicure time, so. Um, so, oh, also family time. We include the kids in photography a lot when we're wanting to try out new lenses or practice something, I don't know, when we're messing around with the camera, we get our kids involved and we try really hard to make it fun for them. And so far, so far they're not tired of getting their pictures taken. So I'd say that's something. They're not teenagers yet. <laughs> but anyway. When the roof falls in, the sky begins to pour and all the ground roads away. Rushing water in the tide comes in and swallows up the shore and all the land disappears. We walk no longer, we walk no longer, and we float upon a broken old ocean with lines and ripples in its way. We float when nothing stays in motion till the one focal length for the rest of your life, what would you shoot? When the and I would pick 85. Yeah, and I'm, we're opposite in this regard. She likes tighter portrait headshot focal lengths. I prefer wide. If anyone's watched the channel, you'll know my answer to this right off, and that is 24 millimeter full frame, uh, 35 millimeter terms. That is it's my favorite, it's my world. I, I see the world in 24, mm -hmm. 24 millimeters. And uh, yeah, but it's good, we balance each other, right? Right, if we each got to have one lens for the rest of our lives, we would balance each other out and we could share and... Yeah, it would work out. We'd have everything covered. That's, I mean, it really is a commentary on our relationship in general, though we are pretty opposite, <laughs> but very balanced as a couple. We're the ideal couple in every way. <laughs> Just no problems, right? Yeah. <laughs> when the last is learned and written on the page, I buy the book to watch it burn and save the ashes. For soon arrives an age in a loss of innocence when we get judged in every way. Stop the splashes, stop the splashes. In we throw upon a broken ocean when So we have a bunch of questions about film photography. And before we get into them though, I want to ask you a question. The viewers didn't ask this, but in that survey that we did, that you know, 450 people answered, I asked what type of content you like the most, and only 33% uh, liked our film-related content. Everyone else said they skipped it. And that, that was disheartening, I'm gonna admit, like it made me sad. But my question for you today is you don't, you're not a film person, not super into film photography, even though interestingly is she shot film in a studio before I was really into photography. So my question for you is, should we give up doing film photography on the vlog? I mean, it's not representative of what you like, just what I like. And mm -hmm. most people that view the channel don't really yeah. appreciate it. So what well, do you think? Well, I don't know, I think You've got to do what you like and not to let other people's opinions skew. Do you want to do a film comparison on, you know, different films and stuff? Go for it. Um, and if somebody doesn't want to watch that, they can skip it. But and that's kind of our policy has been we do videos on stuff we're interested in photography wise. Yeah, we're not going to do a lens review or a review a camera that we don't actually think we would use so just for views <laughs> right 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 so we're gonna just be true to what we like and do what we like right yeah i and think then so if other people don't like it that's okay they it's, can skip it it's good to hear you say that but that's yeah. how i feel about it so yeah so we're gonna keep doing film 
feel free to skip it. So when it comes to film, we did have some questions about that. And so Daniel Anugera asks, which film stock was the first one I used? That was HP5. Well, I mean, other than when I wasn't really into photography, but when I first started getting into black and white film photography, it was HP5+. Plus. I don't use HP5+, Plus now, as much. I don't, I think it's fine. Um, it's not contrasty enough for me, though. I much, much prefer the look of Acros, even Delta 100. Um, but actually, my favorite film now, and this goes to the next one, uh, someone asks, what is my favorite film? I forget where that was. Someone asked what my favorite film was, and that is actually Ultrafine Extreme uh, 400 and 100, and the reason is, is because it's, it's one, dirt cheap, but two, I love the look of it. So it's a win-win, and I always recommend Ultrafine to everyone who will listen. It's not a very popular film. Its packaging looks kind of bland, but I love it. So for color film, Ektar, though, that's my favorite. So, yeah. And then... Someone else asked, would you, have you used film for pro job? And the answer is no way, uh, too risky for me. There are plenty of film photographers who will do weddings and specifically do film because it's, I mean, it's a selling factor. Some people want, and more and more people want film in the weddings, but we don't do a lot of weddings and that's the only time I could see us doing it. Um, the film look, quote unquote, is not something we need in our pro jobs. Mostly that's because we do family portraiture, but also more and more event photography. And with event photography, I need to be able to get that photo out fast. We Instagram or tweet that stuff, you know, right in the moment. And so it's not, it's not viable. So 